Yep. Well, so my name is Abayim. Um, I've been living in D.C. now for about 16 years. We just confirmed that it's not 15, as I've been saying, but 16. Those years go by so fast. Um, but I, uh, I live across the street. Okay. So this has been a near and dear park for me for so many years. And, um, you know, I started to get more of an affinity for, the, for this park over the years when I started to learn more about the history and like the symbolism and why it was here. And, um, you know, this is called, we call it Malcolm X Park, but original name is Meridian Park, right? And when I figured out why it's Meridian Park and, you know, what a Meridian is, it just made it that more special to me. And for those who don't know, you know, the Meridian Line, which is a line of longitude um, that, you know, measures north and south, um, is where the sun is directly overhead at 12 noon. And a lot of ancient city planning, um, especially like in Egypt, like the ancient Egyptians, they used to always build their major cities around the Meridian Line because it was believed that on that line, was the most spiritual energy. The most spiritual energy was infused. And uh, 16th Street, uh, which is right where the uh, park sits, or between 15th and 16th, um, is the Meridian Line. And so at 12 o'clock, this area has the most high spiritually charged energy. Um, which is why if you go up and down 16th Street, there's more churches on 16th Street. Churches, synagogues, mosques, embassies, you know, and just spiritual centers and mansions than in any other street in the country so it's a very special place um, if you go around the park you see a lot of like Egyptian symbolism like you know what we know as the Washington Monument you know which is really um, you know a, a 6,000 year old symbol representing the first king of Egypt is here in the park and the Lotus you know park services they plant lotus flowers um, and uh, no, papyrus uh, plants in the uh, in the in these uh, cascading waterfall over there, which are from Egypt, you know, and India. So just having that like mix of cultures here has always been something very fascinating to me. And then having that like spiritual groundedness in the park has always been, you know, amazing. I think I heard that the White House was originally going to be built on this location. Um, you know, because of the energetics of the place. So it's definitely a magical place and it's no wonder why, you know, for so many years, the drummers would meet here, you know, this drum circle would meet here, um, you know, every Sunday to raise the vibration. So do you participate in the drum circle at all? Or I do, yeah. For when, I, when, I'm, when I'm around, when I, you know, from time to time. Awesome. Yeah. Well, well, you know, actually, 16 years ago when I moved to D.C., um, I actually was, uh, I came here for school, and one of my dorms that I, lived, that I lived in was right there, right across the street, Meridian Hill. And I would go, I didn't, I actually didn't live there, I didn't live there, I lived next to it, but I had so many friends that lived there, and I would visit them, and I never set foot in the park. In fact, I didn't even know the park existed. It wasn't even, I wasn't even aware that the park was here. And I always ask myself, why? Like, why is that? You know, or why was that? And maybe it just wasn't as inviting as it is now. You know, and I hear stories that, you know, back then the park was like, it was, it was littered and run down and, you know, there's trash everywhere and syringes and, and you know, it just wasn't a... a, a you know, a pleasant place to come and visit. So I think just energetically, I wasn't attracted to it at that time. And it wasn't until years later that, you know, community members started making initiatives to clean the park up. 
Um, one of my mentors, uh, Tony Browder, he actually does a field trip called Egypt on the Potomac. And he's taught, he taught me a lot about the significance of the park and the Meridian Line and why it's called Meridian Park. And he says that a lot of us don't reserve the right to call it Malcolm X Park because for years the place was run down and littered and it wasn't until new people started moving into the city that the place became clean. So <laughs> he says we don't reserve that right that we should call it Meridian Park. Um, but yeah, it's definitely changed. The demographics have, you know, have definitely changed uh, over the years. Um, and you know, I, I feel like it's a part, that's just a part of, of nature. Things are always changing and forming and moving and shifting and, you know, um, but, you know, I do believe that it's all, you know, in divine order and all for, you know, the, you know, for the betterment of everyone. So, speaking of changes, uh, how, where do you see the park and what it will look like in five years? Well, my intentions for this park in five years is one, get some like nice grass. I'm all about the grass. I used to come out here every morning and stretch and meditate. Um, but it got to a point where, you know, just I didn't have any grass space to, to do it, you know, because it's, you know, but there have been pushes made to like get the grass nice. Um, we finally got that, the uh, waterfall going again, which is amazing. Um, I'd like to see more, you know, some more vegetation, you know, like some different kinds of trees and herbs and flowers and just really make it this like fortress of like, you know, life, you know, where birds and, you know, that's the kind of park I'd like to see. Yeah.